Welcome to the last of the September editions of A Year in a Day in a Life, where we look at Anton Bruckner's uh, compositions on a month-by-month -month basis across the entire year as a celebration that leads up to his 200th birth uh, centenary in 2024. We start with a painting called Suspension by Canadian artist Sophie Gervais. It's a watercolour with graphite and I don't know if you can uh, see this, watercolour and gold leaf. I'll give you a nice sort of close up there. So you've got a rather a nice textured picture to look at with this one. I was looking at the the month of September, this last week, it, it's amazing. Where has the time gone? We're now on the 30th of September. So I thought, uh, I thought I'd have a look through what we haven't covered for September. And there is the Mass number no. 3, which was completed on the 9th of September in 1868. There is the first performance of the Missa Solemnis in 1854 on the 14th. Interestingly, you also have the commencement of Mass Number no. 3 in 1867. And in this final week, you have the beginning of the first version of the Te Deum on the 28th of September in 1883. The 29th of September sees the first performance of the Cantata Arnett in 1852. The completion of the first Mass on the 29th in 1864 and the first performance of the second Mass in 1869. And finally, completion of Symphony No. 4 in its second version of 1878 on the 30th of September, which is today. I was having a look through the, the list of compositions in this month and part of me wanted to talk about the Requiem from 1849 but then there's also his Bruckner's first mass in 1864 and I thought well actually I could do talk about both of them because like everything in this reality, it is all about contrast, up and down, dark and light. And you could even say at the superficial level, the personalities of Wagner and Bruckner are very, very different. But they also share commonality in, in the fact that they are visionary artists in their own right. So the Requiem in D is in D minor, which also the first mass is in D minor. It's a key that was very, uh, should we say, significant and to Bruckner. So I'm just going to refer to my notes here. So the Requiem in D minor from 1849, it was premiered on the 15th of September of that year in the St. Florian, St. Florian Monastery, with a second performance on the 11th of December, also in 1849. Uh, ah, yes, and it was composed in memory of Franz Sailor, He's the notary of the St. Florian Monastery who bequeathed Bruckner the famous Bosendur for piano. You can see the piano in the background of the few photographs that are available of Bruckner that you can find on, on an internet search. So the, the Requiem is scored for mixed choir, vocal soloists, three trombones, one horn, strings, and, and organ with figured bass. It is perhaps Bruckner's first large-scale work that shows his mastery really coming to the fore. It's 
heavily influenced by Mozart's Requiem, um, as probably as the blueprint for which this is based. And it contains of six parts, the introit, the Dies Irae, the Offertorium, the Sanctus, the Benedictus, and the Agnus Dei. That would could even be a separate discussion in its own right on the uh, etymology of these words. So the Requiem was composed prior to Bruckner having um, his correspondence with Simon Sector and thoroughly mastering all aspects of composition and also prior to a follow-on with Otto Kitzler where he studied further and obviously the introduction to Wagner. So, and here we have an interesting co contrast. If you compare the 1849 Requiem with the 1864 First Mass, also in D minor, um, it's interesting the as much the mastery but also the significant differences, the sort of more Wagnerian mass number one. And there are some beautiful, absolutely beautiful musical passages in both these works. I was listening to both of them uh, two nights ago in preparation to making this video. And I'd, it's so easy to forget how wonderful th these compositions really are. The... Uh, where are we? I'm just re just looking through my notes. Um, the Requiem anticipates um, two of his uh, earlier symphonies, namely the nullified symphony known as Symphony Zero and Symphony Number no. Three, which both share this key of D minor again. As I've suggested, the key of D, be it in its major or minor form, when viewed in terms of the human energy chakra system, would be heart-centered. And certainly the works that Bruckner wrote in the, in the key of D minor are very significant, had a lot of meaning to him, it, it seems quite obvious. So after the um, Requiem, Bruckner can composed two further large-scale works before he went in the, into this sort of uh, le learning composition phase with, with Simon Sector and then Otto Kitzler. And he composed the Magnificat in 1852 and the Missa Solemnis in 1854, but they don't quite measure up to the mastery of this Requiem, which really gives a good indication of what is to come with Bruckner as a composer in his own right. The Mass number no. 1 in D minor, I'm just looking, sorry, looking through my notes again. Um, this is, where are we? Yeah, this is also in six parts with the Mass, the Kyrie, the Gloria, the Credo, the Sanctus, the Benedictus and the Agnus Dei. Uh, the Mass number one is, you could almost get a taste of had Bruckner written an organ concerto, how that may have sounded as this is scored for soloist, mixed choir, orchestra and organ. Because there was no organ available um, at the Linzer Riedelton style, where this, this work was performed, Bruckner composed an alternative with woodwinds, clarinet and bassoons for the short organ intermezzo in the midsection of the credo. The manuscripts, the manuscripts are archived in the Aust Austrian National Bibliothèque. And Bruckner revised the work in 1876. Now, I wonder if that was influenced by seeing the first before the premiere of the Wagner's Ring Cycle at Bayreuth. There's certainly a very sort of 
Wagnerian feel in the, the harmonies that Bruckner uses in this first mass. It is a, it's a, a work of pure mastery as far as um, I'm concerned. And it's like it's like many things with Bruckner, you get a taste of what might have been had he been a completely different composer. But his focus was on the pure sound world of the symphony, um, composed through the organ, but expressed as a symphony. And interestingly, this... Uh, this, this first mass... It's, where are we, uh, sorry, I should have made notes from my notes so they're easier to read. Uh, where are we, um, ah yes, um, there's an ascending scale passage which it represents like a stairway to heaven and it's used in the adagio of several of the symphonies and his Te Deum. Not least the adagio in the Ninth Symphony which is also in D minor. So I invite you to look at the playlist which is AB1A large scale choral works. As further composers are being added into the playlist, I thought it was a good idea to prefix the playlist with the initials. So AB is obviously Anton Bruckner, RW will be Richard Wagner, and then there'll be LVB for Ludwig van Beethoven, FL for Franz Liszt, and so on. We're basically going to be sort of covering the spectrum from about 1764 to roughly about 1902, which in the musical sense, I feel is a Germanic equivalent to the Greek world of philosophy much earlier on. There's this huge bloom of artistic expression throughout the late 18th and 19th century in the German-speaking world and some real gems to be seen, heard and enjoyed across all realms of art. So thank you for listening to this um, concluding part for September and tomorrow we move into October so there will be another in the year, in the day, in a life series of discussions with visual presentations. Until next time, thank you very much for listening.